Jay. Good morning, Des. Nice, nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, too. Do you want to do a bit more fishing? Hopefully catch a few of those pike, Jack. It's looking nice. Right. You're going to do better than you did last time. Nine, nine pounds last time, eh? Take some doing, Jack. Let's hope we do. <laughs> That's right. Which side yeah. of the lake do you, do you uh, fancy? The way it's fishing at the moment, I think it'd be a lot better off if you fish the other end of the boat. OK, leave they the paddles out, out both. First. They are coming out of both, but I think leave the paddles till later. Give it a try down the other end. Let's go and give All it right. a go then, Jack. Fine. Come Thanks. on, let's catch a few fish. I think it's fair to say that lure fishing in this country is one of the fastest growth areas in our sport. And it's easy to see why. It's quite easy to do, it's easy to learn, and it's very inexpensive. Buy a rod, a reel, and a couple of lures, decent pair of shoes, and you can walk around any lake in the country, such as we are here today, and catch fish. But before I talk about lures, one thing I'd like to point out, which is very, very important. A lot of people think that if they buy lures, pretty coloured lures and they throw it into the water, they're going to catch pike. That's not right. The thing one must do first is find a swim with pike in it. This is one such swim. It's full of fish. The main feature, there's a boat. The boat doesn't go into the bottom and there's a gap under the boat. All the pike in this swim, unless they're outside feeding, will be under the boat. Now, many people have fished this in the past, but very few people have caught pike here. And without to knock those people, the problem is that they haven't cast where the pike are. Now, to fish the swim properly, one must fish a lure that you cast further out from the boat, wind, sink the lure down, and make sure that the lure comes under the boat. Now, even if the pike aren't feeding, if a lure comes into its haunt, then there's a chance the pike takes. If you're 300 yards away from an area where fish are not living, then you're not going to catch. But if you go right where they live, right into their larder, then there's a chance of catching fish. This swim is about two foot at the start. There's a bed of weed, and then it's clear. I would expect that the fish are that side, the far side of the weed, waiting for any fish, any fish passing the weed. That's a great ambush point. The type of lure that I would use to catch fish in this swim are all in my lure box. Let's take a look in the lure box. And here's my lure box, full of lures of every colour and every size. But one thing I would tell you straight from the start is there's many colours and there's many sizes, and over the years, thousands of lures that's been designed to catch pike and perch and zander. But still, even in 1988, there are the classics. I'll go through my two lure boxes here today and point out some of those classics. By classics, I mean they will always catch pike. In 10 years' time, they'll catch pike, and 10 years ago, they catch pike. Let's look at some of those lures. Starting here, this is a timber rattler. It's an American lure, head and timber rattler. It's got a rattle inside, that's why it's called a timber rattler. It's a ball bearing inside, and as it goes along, it rattles, which hopefully attracts a pike. Now, I've got numbers of patterns of these. What I tend to do is, if I get a good lure, I make sure that I've got every pattern. It may be a dark or it may be a light pattern, depending on the light conditions, which we'll talk about later. There's a green one. It's a shad colour. There's a larger timber rattler, based on the same sort of thing. Again, and as you can see by the teeth mark, quite a few pike have enjoyed eating that one. Moving along the box, another great favourite of mine, Fuller Meadow Mouse. I don't think for one minute that a pike think that, that thinks it's a mouse at all. But what it does do, it's got a very, very nice action, and it fishes about a foot under the surface. And even in the winter, you can catch fish within a foot or two foot of, of, uh, of depth. Years gone by, books always wrote that lure fishing was a summer hobby. It isn't. Pike feed well in the winter, and we're imitating live fish with these these lures. So they eat live fish through the winter, so we should catch fish on, uh, on, in the winter on lures, as we'll prove today. That's a super lure. I got them in a number of colours. There's a black, there's a grey, and there's a brown. Further down in the box, some very large lures here. These are Abu High Lows, always been a fish catcher. But I'll say now that you would think that to catch a big fish, you would have to use a big lure. Over the years, I've found that some of the biggest fish are always caught on small lures and subtle movement lures. 
and I'll prove that when we, when we show them in the water, that a lure that moves very, very zigzaggy over a sort of two foot um, range can actually frighten pike. Now, you may find that strange where you would think that pike are the, the shark of the water and frightened of nothing. They are, and they can be frightened of a very, very, very um, vigorous movement. So a nice subtle movement in the, in the plug is what I look for. He is probably one of the classics. And just to prove what I said earlier about being in inexpensive, this one's around about 250. It's a Shakespeare big S. And from this swim that we're going to fish today, I actually caught 99 pound of pike on that lure. It's a tremendous lure, a cheap lure, and a very subtle movement, and not a big lure at all. In fact, you will catch fish, sometimes a lot bigger on a little S than a big S. So don't think for one minute that you're going to catch your biggest pike on your biggest lure. Going through again, here's, here's a great favourite of mine. I've started fishing this lure only about the last year and already I've taken lots of fish up to 18 pounds on it. Tremendous lure, it's called Casamo Professor. Comes in a number of sizes, but again, this size t tends to produce fish a lot better than the larger size. Don't keep casting large lures. Another great favourite, Lucky 13. Lots of fish on a Lucky 13. This fish is two foot deep and it's ideal to fish over a weed bed. One of the great mistakes that a lot of people will make is continually casting a lure and continually going into weed. There's no need for that. I'm going to show you a range of lures today that will fish all depths of the water from right on the surface to right down to 30 feet. So for God's sake, don't keep going into the weed. Fish the right lure. That's a Lucky 13. Comes in numbers of sizes, numbers of patterns get yourself a whole range of the things. Let's move over to my other box. It's a whole host of goodies in this one. But again, there's quite a lot of lures here that'll never catch a fish and will never be marked by a pike. I'm afraid I got caught when I was younger and bought a whole host of, of plugs, but you're in a different position. I'm going to tell you the successful lures. Here we go. This one's a nice one. This is the bigger version and a copper version of that Casamo Professor again. I find this an excellent lure when fish are sitting on the bottom, it's very cold and the pike are, are reluctant to move. This one inched along the bottom, fished almost like a, a dead fish, produces a lot of fish. And because of its slow movement and because of big pike being slower, this tend to produce some very big fish. Another lucky 13, another big S. I keep those all over my lure box because they're such good lures. These, these are from France, and a whole range of them are saucy, saucy lures from France. They're tremendous lures. They look a bit, they look a bit strange, but they do actually catch fish. They're not a subtle movement. These are times when you might be struggling with any type of lure, and I would try this sort of thing. It's from really ridiculous lure, but sometimes can produce on the day. This is one that. It's a quick fish. I catch a lot of fish on this, but I've only ever caught small fish. I don't know why. I've not got any great confidence in a big lure to produce big pike. But this one, as we'll see, the quick fish has got a tremendous eel-like motion, but produces a lot of small fish. Here's a lure, an American man's lure from the company man's. And the tremendous size lip here will make that dive to 30 feet. I have a number of these lures. They're all from Mans in America. And those, those big lips make them dive that depth. I also like these for tripping along the bottom, which will show in the water that they actually tip along the bottom and can stir up mud, which can get a pike feeding very nicely. Farther across, another sozzy lure. Same sort of thing. Very nice action that. Fish that like a sink and draw method of, of dead baiting. And last of all, I have great faith in this little fellow. Number of, of, of patterns. It's called a Canadian wiggler. Again, this has only been in this country about 18 months. Tremendous lure. Catches a lot of pike. I've caught a number of double figured pike, up to four and five in a day on this lure. It's a tremendous lure. The bottom of my box, I have a heap of spinners. I must admit, 
I'm not a great fan of spinners for, for pike, although I'm a great fan of, of, of spinners for perch and zander. Spinners, for me, tend to produce, this type of spinner at least, tends to produce a lot of fish and a lot of sport, but mainly small fish. So if you've got a lake that you want a bit of sport, we fish two, three, four and five pounds, and on the right gear, even those sort of fish can give you a good day's sport, then these are the type of things to, to, to buy. A whole series, companies uh, such as Abu will make uh, a whole set, all good lures for you to catch fish. I'd like to mention here in my, in my box, I don't think a lot of people do it in this country, certainly the Americans do a lot of it, and that is using flavours and attractors. This one was made specially for me by a company called Biotrack. It's a, a paste that I actually put onto the lure. As it goes through the water, this disperses and hopefully attracts the pike. I believe that this works very, very well. This is another one, it's American, Dr. Juice. I actually put this on my hands before starting to fish. I'm a great believer that fish can smell for long, long distances. We've proved that over the years that they can. So why can't they smell human beings? I don't think this necessarily attracts fish, but what it does do is cover or mask the smell of my hands when touching the lures. I'm a great believer that that works. There's a number of companies and there's a number of flavours. I don't think it, it, it really matters as long as it's herring, mackerel, a fishy type smell just to mask the flavour of the human body. This setup here, this rod and reel, is probably the most commonest used in Europe and the USA. It's not quite caught on in this country yet, but I think it will. They're a very, very nice reel. They're very easy to use. Um, they're super for playing fish. And they're very easy to cast the baits. Nice light setup. I tend to use nine foot rods, even seven or eight foot rods. Not too long a handle. You don't want a carp type handle. I want to be able to move it around the body much the same as in match fishing, I want to be able to move it round without getting the actual butt slammed here. If we're in tight areas, I want to be able to, to cast wh whichever way. If I see a pike rise, I want to be able to cast to it. I think it's important to say here the type of trace I use. I make my own traces. I use a 30 or 50 pound breaking strain swivel. I use 15, 20 or 28 multi-strand wire and I always crimp the wire rather than twist it. I much prefer to use a larger American snap link than the smaller ones on most shop bought traces. The reason I like to use this size is because it gives the lure a much better movement. This is a sozzy lure. We mentioned it earlier. It's got a nice subtle movement. Let me show it to you in the water. Nice slow retrieve. Look at the action of that. Superb. What pike can resist that? Let's have a look at some more. This is the same type of rod. It's nine foot in length, but this, line, this time a multiplier reel. I personally don't like using multiplier reels unless I'm using heavy plugs. I find it very difficult to use a multiplier with light plugs. And a lot of anglers starting up lure fishing like the look of the reel, they buy the reel, and then find they get lots of birds' nests, tangles, etc. because what they're doing is using too light a lure for the reel. You need at least a two ounce lure to make it a nice, easy action to cast with this. Nice reel, nice playing reel, Quite simple to, to cast once you've got the, the technique, um, but to be honest, first of all, when you start your lure fishing, tend to steer away from this type of reel at first, although later, this could be a reel that you'll really enjoy catching fish with. Let's have a look at the, the action of this lure, and this lure is called a crazy crawler. Fabulous lure. In fact, I don't think I mentioned it in my box because this is the, one, the only one that I've got left. Make sure you have this one in your collection. It's a super lure for the summer. You'll see the two wings, those are these little arms, and you'll see that when we put it in the water, that these will crawl over, making a real ludicrous action. 
but one that's very successful over the top of, of Potomageton, reeds, lilies, etc. Lots of small fish to be caught on this. I've never had any big pike on it, but lots of fish. The take uh, off a pike on this is tremendous. Usually the take uh, includes the fish sort of early in itself, sort of a foot, two foot up out of the water. Absolutely super lure for that. Let's have a look at the action. Absolutely fantastic. To struggle when you first start any type of fishing, you don't want that. Make it as easy as possible. And this is the setup that will make it easy. This particular lure, one of my favourites, Shakespeare Begets. As I said earlier, it's a, a cheap lure. I think they retail for about £2.50, £3. Absolutely fantastic lure. Caught a lot of fish on this. It's a nice subtle action, and I prefer subtle action. Later I will show you a lure that has a very violent action. And as I mentioned earlier, it catches a lot of fish. But not so many big fish as this lure. Let's have a look at the action. Look how he goes. Beautiful little lure. If you dive in really deep, that front lip will nudge on the bottom and disturb mud, a thing that can stimulate pike to feed. Cracking lure. This is a very short rod. It's about six foot in length and quite um, popular with a lot of lure anglers. I personally don't like this short rod. I think it's handy for, for casting under bushes, etc. But I think it's an inferior rod to a, a, an eight, nine or ten foot rod. One thing I would say about all lure rods is, look at the action, there we go. It's a very powerful action. It's bending at the tip, it's a fast tapered blank. It's a very powerful rod, although it's only short, like most of my spinning rods are on the short side compared to other branches of sport, I like the rod to be powerful because if we look at the hooks on the lure, they are very thick wire. A nice light action rod, which lots of people seem to use nowadays to get the fun from their pike. You get fun while you're playing them. The only problem is you rarely land them because you rarely set the hooks into the pike's mouth. At the end of the day, we all like a lot of fun, but we're here to land pike, hopefully. And this sort of rod, a powerful rod, will set those hooks in the pike's mouth and hopefully land the pike. This is another multiplier reel. I would use this reel with this lure. The lure's heavy enough to send the spool spinning. So I would definitely use this setup with one another, this heavy lure with this multiplier. Always keep that in mind. This is a quick fish. I talked about it earlier, having a very violent action. It's very good for, for small fish. Although some people have had big fish, I'm not saying it, it don't catch big fish, but for me, it catches a lot of small fish. Let's have a look at the action. Very violent action. Can catch fish, sometimes can frighten fish. But well worth putting one of these lures in your box. This is one of the longest rods I use. It's nine and a half foot in length. Again, I'm using a fixed spool reel. This is the meadow mouse. Fish is just under the surface. It's an absolutely smashing lure for the summer. But it does catch fish in the winter, especially over weed beds that you don't want to consistently keep diving the lure into. Let's have a look at the action. Nice subtle movement. There he goes. Nice lure. And this is the last one, my last setup. It's the most powerfulest blank that I use. It's very, very powerful rod. Again, the fixed spool. It's a rod that I use for heavy lures, such as this Casamo Professor. Cast it out a long way. Very powerful rod to hook the fish at long range. Again, one of my favourite lures, the Casamo Professor. Let's have a look at the action of this one. With this lure, let it sink, retrieve fast, retrieve slow, let it sink, retrieve. Look at the action. Looks like a dying fish. A big pike will take that. We're in the swim now, but before we start fishing, let me show you two essential items of tattle to use in lure fishing. First, a large landing net. If you're taking up lure fishing for the first time, then you probably own a landing net that you've used in general fishing. 
it probably won't be right for the job. I use a 36 or 42 inch landing net with a three or four foot net drop. If you've not caught pike before, it may look a very, very big net and you may feel a little silly walking around your local pond with it. But believe me, that even a small pike of seven or eight pounds won't fit in your normal size pan net. Please get one of these. There's nothing worse than spending all day trying to catch a pike only to lose it at the net because you can't get the fish in the net. Buy one straight away. The second piece of equipment, I always keep it on my jacket, there, is a pair of forceps. These are long forceps, especially for pike fishing. So if the, if the, the lure is a little deeper inside the mouth, then we can get inside the mouth without cutting our hands. A very, very useful piece of equipment. This is the setup I've chosen. It's a quick fish, the one with the violent action. Let's see if we can get a take first chuck. Light line, about seven pound. Hopefully with a bit of luck, this lure should produce us a take very early on. Let's chuck it over by the boat. What I'm doing with this lure, nice and easy, not too fast. A lot of people reel in too quickly. It's important. Big fish don't chase around. Not, and if you, the, the quicker the retrieve, very often the smaller the pike. Keep it nice and easy, keeping the action varied. Lift up, let the lure drop down. Don't just reel it in. Try and look into the water if you can and imagine what the lure is doing. Try and do different things with it. Faster. Stop. Sometimes, very often, a pike can be at the end of the lure not taken. You've rested. Just as you start to reel in again, you can have a fish. There you can see that the lure's gone. Just clip the top of the Canadian pondweed. That's nice. Those pike will be lying in that Canadian pondweed. With a bit of luck, a few chucks out there and we should get a pull. Always clear the lure. I see quite a lot of people too idle to clear the weed out. They sling it back out and they wonder why they don't get a take. Not many fish are dragging weed around with them. Okay, what we're gonna try and do is just gonna work that lure nice and slow over the top of that Canadian pond weed. A lot of anglers new to lure fishing tend to try and get as many casts in the day as possible, retrieving the lure very fast. In fact, it's an absolute cracking way of catching small fish is the faster you retrieve, the smaller the pike. Try and keep it a nice, nice slow retrieve on this type of lure. Lifting it, stopping. Imagine looking into the water and imagine what the lure is doing. Don't just reel it in, make it as attractive as possible. It could well be a pike looking at that lure now. Stop. Very often the first time you reel again, a pike can take. There we go, bring the lure right down the side of the boat, over the top of the Canadian pond weed. Nice and slow, nice and slow. Not too quick, a lot of people make the big mistake of reeling too fast to catch a pike. There we go, let's have another chuck. What I'm doing is letting it rest on the surface just for a few seconds before I reel in. Much the same as you do with a cat with a piece of string. Instead of pulling the string away from the cat first off, just leave the string motionless and then start to retrieve the, the string and away goes the cat. He's, he's after the string straight away. Much the same with this. Let it rest on the top. Pikes notice that it's coming to its home. All of a sudden it's, it's half cocked, ready to have a go. And when you start to reel in with a bit of luck, 
Pike goes at it straight away. Doesn't this time. Over the top of that weed again. No weed. Thought it was a take at first. Nice and slow. Another airplane again. Thor pops right in the flight path of Heathrow. And about every two or three minutes, a great big plane like that seems to come over the fishery. It doesn't affect the fishing though. It would if you hooked one. Nice and slow, as I say. Most important, if you want to catch a decent pike, keep that retrieve on this type of lure anyway. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Many's the time I've seen a pike come right to the edge. Don't be too quick to get the lure out of the water. Many is the time you'll catch a pike right at your feet. I'm going to take that bit of weed off. A lot of anglers leave that weed on. You won't catch a pike with weed on the lure. Or I haven't to date. So take every bit of every bit of weed off the lure. Let's give it another chug. I'll see if I can get just a little bit nearer to the boat this time. Right by the boat. Let it rest again. I still fancy my chances to catch a fish from here, actually. Although it's a bit slow at the moment. Still nice and slow. A bit quicker. A bit slower. See, I'm into that weed. If I do it a bit too fast, I'm into the weed. That's where I want to be. That's where the pike are living. That's where I've got to bring that lure. I think, actually, I could do with a change of lure. This hasn't produced. Let's go along with one of my favourites. I'll go and change to a big S, see if that can produce the goodest. My old favourite, the big S. A year ago, I won the lure championships here with this, this lure, smashing lure, the big S. I had 99 pounds, seven ounces, nine fish, eight doubles, best 16. Speaks for itself. Let's see if it produces today. Right tight onto that boat. I retrieved slightly faster with the S than that quick fish that I've just used. But again, being a floating lure, just as I come up to the weed, I stop reeling, up comes the lure, then start reeling again, just popped up, down again, over the top of the weed, nice and slow, trying to come to the surface because it's floating. Come over the weed, bit faster retrieve, bit faster retrieve. Right to the edge, right to the edge. Caught a bit of weed. That's come off. That fish nice. I'm more confident with that now. Back again. I remember that lure championship. It just goes to show how important it is to be smack on the right spot for catching fish. I was standing here and was getting take after take and nigh on a hundred pound of fish. Gord Burton, probably the best lure angler in the country, was standing just there. And can't take it away from, from Gordon. If he'd have been standing here, he'd have had just the same as me. He's a tremendous lure angler. But he just couldn't get to the spot where the fish were taken, and that was just on the corner of the boat. Just goes to show that actually moving around the water can produce fish. You can be in one spot having nothing. On other spots, you can be having fish a chuck. Gord was there, casting sort of six foot to the left. Could hardly get a take compared to me. To be honest, if there'd have been a few fish in this swim, no, it's weed. If there'd been a few fish in this swim, I would have expected to take it by now. I'll have one more cast by the side of the boat. Clear the weed. I have one more cast down the side of the boat. And I think we'll, we'll have a walk down by the paddle. There's, there's usually a double or two down there. See if we can go and catch one. Another chuck out. 
down the side of the boat. Give it another few chugs. If it don't produce, looks like I might stamp on it. No, still not getting, still not getting a take. No Swede. Have to give this uh, big S a bit of a talking to rather look of it. No weed. Now go out there and get eaten. Come on, my son, this time round. No, there's no fish in the swim. I'm just not getting a knock. I'm going to have one more chuck and I'm moving. Don't stand in the one swim all the time, just keep casting and casting and casting. If you've tried a couple of lures and there's a pike there who wants to feed, then he'll grab it. I honestly believe in my own mind that there's, there's not a taking pike. There may well be a pike down there, but there's not a lure taking pike down there. And that's where I'm fishing today, so I'm struggling. If there ain't a fish here that wants to be taken, I'll move down the bank and catch one that wants to be caught. Now, that'll do for me. I'm going to walk down to the paddles. Let's get me gear and have a walk down. OK, here we are in the paddle swim. Probably the most famous swim at Thorpe Park. In fact, probably one of the most famous swims in, in pike fishing. I think everybody in pike fishing would love to fish a day on the paddles. I've had a lot of fish here in the past. I've been lucky enough to, to fish it probably about 10 times in the lure championships and after NASA conferences, etc. It's a smashing swim, lots of fish. Right on the end of the boat we're going to cast. Haven't fished it yet. First cast. Never know, we might get a fish. Here we go. Not too fast. We dive down. Down onto the reed. There's a, there's a take. Yep. Yep. It's a nice fish, actually. Just adjust the clutch. Swimming in nice and close. Ain't doing a lot, actually. That's got a chance of being a decent fish. Yep. It is a decent fish. Here we go. Yep. Trying to throw the trying to throw the plug look. Nice fish. Nice fish. That's gonna reach double figures, that. There we go. Lovely. Hook it. That's for a kipper. Woo! Beautiful fish. Absolutely cracking. Right, this will go double figures, I think. Let's weigh it. That's a nice fish. Nicely hooked up. Just get the hooks out there. No need to be frightened, the old pike. Put the hands up there. No problem at all. Let's get the way back. Wet the old way back. So we don't damage the fish. Get the scales. See it over the scales. We get a nice true reader. There's a zero. Let's get the fish in the sack. to the sack. Special weighing sling, look. Special weighing sling, nicely. Take your time with the pike. He's okay out the water for, for this length of time. Get him nicely in the sack. Scales. 
in. Let's weigh him up. It's a nice fish. Just over 14. Let's pull, let's pull him back again. Nice and safely. None the, none the worst for his capture. It's a nice fish. It's a typical Thorpe Park fish, actually. Nice, sleek, hard fighting pike. Just goes to show what a well managed water can produce. Woo. There you go. Before you let him go, keep him nice and straight. Don't let him just swim on upside down. He's going. Here he goes. Go and tell your grandma I want to catch you. Here you go. Lovely fish. Okay, let's give it another cast. I thought there might be a couple of fish around here actually. Nice and slow. Not too fast like I said before. We're real too fast now. What's going to happen? We're going to catch right into the weed. When you're fishing a lure that it's the surface, especially on a sinking lure, that's it, the weed. When you're on a sinking lure, count how many seconds that the lure is sinking before you retrieve. Because if you've counted five and then you retrieve and you hook a fish, then next time out you can count five again in knowing that you're retrieving that lure and the depth the pike are feeding. A lot of times people are just casting out willy-nilly not knowing what depth they're fishing at, especially on a sinking lure. And what's happening then is, I think I might have had a little take then actually. I think I might just have had a knock. But what happens is people are just reeling in, they're fishing six foot, they're fishing three foot, they're fishing eight foot. Then they hook a fish, and they might hook a fish at say seven feet, but they don't know that. When I'm fishing, I know where I'm fishing. If I catch a fish, I should be into another one pretty soon. Should be more than one there. There we go. Should be a few fish. There's usually fish. There's a there's a take. Yep. Yep, there's another one on. Yep. Oh crikey, I've got the clutch set bloody light there. Yep. I'm giving him some stick. Yep. Come on, you devil. Yeah, nice fish. Having told you how to put a landing net in the right spot, I don't do that. I've showed you the right way, now I've showed you the wrong way. It's a nice fish. Yep. Oop. That's another nice fish, actually. Might just make double figures there. Eh? Nice fish. We come again, nice and easy. Get it away from the net. That's where all the tangles begin. Lay it down, nice, nice looped. That's off. It's a nice fish. Just getting a bit wet. It's a nice fish. That's just about ten pounds. It's a nice fish. This time of the year, fish are tended to be long and thin. A couple of months I'll be filling out here with spawn. Let me just wet it before I show you. Look big, big head, long body, nothing in the body, but still a nice fish, nice fighting fish. Just return it there. Lovely fish. It's a smashing fish. Go on, away you go. There she goes. Rosy boy. Nice fish. Let's have another cast. Here we go. Yeah, that's a nice fish. It's not a big fish. Oh. oh, I can see the plug. Now look, there's a problem. A lot of people would net this fish, and if you get the hooks in the net, you'd do a great deal of damage. Don't panic. Bring the fish towards you. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Pikes, well played out, nice and easy. Bring it right in, lift it up, and away you go. Look at that, nice fish. A lot better than netting the fish. There's my forceps, here they are. You see, if we'd have put the net on that, that would have caught in, 
pike that had been spinning would have caused the pike a lot of damage. A lot better to hand, I've hand landed fish to 920 pounds, so there's no problem. That's well in. That one's going to come out. Right. Nice little fish. Nice little fish. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll sack that one. Have another chuck. And see if we can show you two nice little. This is a nice little uh, sack that I recently had sent to me by Kevin Nash. It's a tube. Wet it. Always wet it. Save taking the slime off it. What it does, you put the fish in the tube, like so. That's a typical caught lure fish. Um, fishing lures is not really the method on most waters in this country to catch your 30s, 40s and 50 pound um, fish. Lures, generally waters around this country, you're going to catch that size fish and they give nice sport. Here we go, fasten it up. We're going to put that in the water. And if you notice there, there's a nice flow of water through there. We just put it in the water, sink it down, rest it against there, and that fish will be nice and safe. Light's really going now. Have to be off the water soon. Let's just see if we can catch another one quick. Be nice if we could. As I say, this is typical of lure fishing. In fact, typical of pike fishing. For hours you've, you've fished, not a thing, and then all of a sudden, you're into fish. A few fish knocking about now. It's a good time of the night to be here, actually, fishing it. A few fish there, nice and slow. Actually, that felt like another little take, but I don't think it was. Yeah, it might have been a take. get that weed off as I say always remove that weed so I'm rushing a bit now because I want to get that make the most of it when fish feeding get that lure out get it out into the spot get it down to the depth if there's taking fish out there get this set right if you're taking fish always make sure the clutch is set right you don't want to take in fish that's the hey up oh, that's took right near the surface that one look here we go another one it's not a big fish again. It's a nice fish. Oh, look, I've hooked it nicely again. I have to hand land that again, look. Here we go. Lovely fish. Hey. It's nice to see pike do that. Here we go, look. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. A lot of people be frightened to do this. There's no problem. Straight up. Here we go. Nicely done. Right, straight out with the hooks. Straight out. Nice and easy. Another typical fish. It's a bit of the lights. Lights are almost gone now. But that's lure fishing. I think we we'd be calling it a day. We've ended on a nice note. Had a couple of smashing fish, look. Not big fish. I've caught a lot of big fish in my time. But big fish aren't the be all and end all of fishing. If those pull your string. A few times a day, you've had a cracking day sport. Let's put them back. It's been a marvellous day. Away you go. Yeah, swimming together, look. Twins. Well, that's about it. Let's pack the gear up. It's been well worth a day out. Fantastic day. Head back up the motorway back home. Nice day lure fishing. Typical lure fishing. Few fish pulling your string. What else can you ask for? It's been a great day.